celebrating the birthday of the Holy Prophet. Uh, I know it's an occasion to commemorate the uh, birth anniversary of Imam Mahdi, but we have a culture in Swahili where when there's a celebration, I'm sure you guys know, whatever the excuse of having Maoli, we have a Maoli, whether it's a Prophet's uh, birthday anniversary, whether it's a Nashi, whether it's uh, whatever, Mila, whether it's uh, a wedding, it's always an excuse to celebrate uh, birthday, inshallah. Uh, MC. Sallallahu ala Muhammad Sallallahu ala Muhammad Sallallahu ala Muhammad وكان قد اجتاز بأخواله بني عدي من الطائفة المجارية ومكث فيهم شهرا سقيما يعانون سمه وشكوى ولما تم من حمله على الراجح تسعة أشهر أشهر قمرية وآن للزمان أن ينجي عنه سكان الله صلي وسلم عليه وعلى وأخذها المخاض فقدت صلى الله عليه وسلم نور النهر اللهم صل وسلم يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام
When we think and contemplate seriously that we are alive, some people who are with us, they passed away last year. Shahar Ramadan, we observe with, with them. And now they are not they are no longer here with us. May Allah have mercy on all of them. Now we are waiting for Shahar Ramadan. We need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. When we know that Shahar Ramadan is Shahar of Barakah, is the month 
full of barakah. The Holy Prophet, when he was preparing the atmosphere of Shahar Ramadan, when he was talking to his companions in khutbah, which is known as Al Khutbah to Shabaniya, in the end of Shaaban uh, month, the Holy Prophet gathered all of them and he said, Ayyuhan Nas, innahu qad aqbala ilaykum shaharullahi bin baraka wal maghfirati wal rahma. O oh people, the month which is coming to you is full of mercy, full of forgiveness, and full of blessings. This month is not like any other month. And we know, I'm sure all of you, you have heard the thought of the Holy Prophet regarding the merits of Shahar Ramadan. Amfasukum fihi tasbih, wa naumukum fihi ibadah, wa amalukum fihi makbula. When you breathe in Shahar Ramadan, your breathing is ibadah, tanafus. Inhaling and exhaling is like you are doing tasbih. When you sleep in the holy month of Ramadan, it's like you are doing ibadah. Your deeds and your dua also are accepted. So there is no any month like Shahar Ramadan. We ask Allah to make us enter Shahar Ramadan. I believe each and every one of you, you have your own program for Shahar Ramadan. Yes, Ustad Abdul Samad here. MashaAllah, may Allah reward him. He asked us to contribute to the iftari of other people in Africa who do not have anything. Alhamdulillah, and the team which was, was organizing for this program, I know they have worked behind the scene to try to make us participate with the people in Africa in order for them to get iftar. Jazakumullah khair al jazak. But do you know that the Holy Prophet has said, Man faqtara minkum sa'iman mu'minan. Anyone who is going to, to provide food, iftar, in this month of Ramadan, kana kaman atata raqaba. You give food, you will be as if you have freed a slave. Iftar is like you are, you are freeing a slave. And it's very scary what we hear from Ustad Abdul Samad that people, per day, they are working for 200 and two, two pound and 50? Two pound. Two pound and 50 per day. That's serious. Two pound. Yeah, and his family is going to feed on that. Yeah, that's, that's subhanallah, how do they survive? It's something which is, it's something which we need to think again and again, that we have a lot, subhanallah. Recently someone, I'm sure you have seen the clip, he said the Holy Prophet during his time, he never, he never thought about food. And when, when he was having his iftar, he didn't have many types of food. But for us, subhanallah, we have. And it's not haram, by the way. If you want to enjoy your many types of iftar, it's not haram. The haram comes when you do isra. When you go extra, you extravagant, you, you become an extravagant, then there is, that there, there is a haram. To invite to one another is fine, and so on and so forth. So I want to send this message to my, to my dear sisters. Sisters, yeah? Yeah, this message is this message is to you, sisters. This message is to you, our daughters. This message is to you, our wives. This is message to you, our sisters. Ladies, I hope you listen to me. Ladies, I hope you listen to me. I hope, ladies, you hear me. Yeah, sisters, I, I hope you hear me, insha'Allah. Salwa ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allah. Allah.
Khair, alhamdulillah, barakallahu fikum. So what we are saying here is that giving iftar for someone who is observing fasting is very important. For you to eat different types of meal during Shahr Ramadan, it's okay. However, our goal should not be we observe fasting in order for us to enjoy the feast. No, that's wrong. And especially to the sisters. Why I was drawing their attention is this. Mashallah, our ladies, yeah, wives, sisters, daughters, they cook a lot for us. Jazahumna Allah khairul jazah. How many types of iftar we don't know. But however, sometimes they get tired that they don't get opportunity to observe ibadah. And that's not right. Because Shahar Ramadan is one month, sometimes 29 days or 30. So if they cook and cook and cook and then cleaning, and, and you don't get time for ibadah. And there are a lot of types of ibadah. Recitation of the Holy Quran, Dua al iftitah and Dua al-Sahar, many types of Dua, and many types of rakats of Salah during the holy month of Ramadan. So inshallah, let us make this Shahar Ramadan to be a different one. Let, let us enjoy spirituality rather than to enjoy the feast. Yeah, I repeat again, sisters, you listen to me, yeah? Huh? Yeah? I hope, inshallah, the message reach. Inshallah, if the message reaches, Salaam ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Salaam ala Muhammad So now, we are waiting for Shahar Ramadan to come. Eagerly. We are waiting for Shahar Ramadan because we have a lot of things to do. This is very good. When you are waiting for someone you love, you go extra mile to prepare, not just waiting, yeah? When we are waiting for Shahar Ramadan, some of us, we have done budget already. We are waiting for Shahar Ramadan, we are giving iftar. We are doing something. So there are two types of waiting. How many types? Two. Two types. One type of waiting is known as active waiting. And another one is passive waiting. Active pa waiting is what we want. We don't want the passive one. Passive is just, I'm, I'm waiting for him to come. You just sit there. What are you doing here? I'm waiting. Who are you waiting for someone to come? That is passive waiting is not good. We need active waiting. Active waiting, you are giving iftar. Active waiting, you are doing mustahabat ready for Shahar Ramadan. Active waiting, you are starting reciting Quran and so on and so forth. This active waiting, imagine if we were to do this for Imam of our time, Sahib al Asir wa Zaman, Ajalallah ta'ala, Farajahu Sharif. Allah, so for this, I would like to talk about one thing which is very important. There was a sheikh in Baghdad. There was a sheikh in Baghdad. I will ask you this question at the end, yeah? His name was Sheikh Al-Mufid. His name is Sheikh? No, that was not his name. This was a nickname. Sheikh Mufid's name is Muhammad Ibn Muhammad. Ibn Nu'man al Akbari or Akbari. Muhammad bin Muhammad. Subhanallah. Some people, when they have children, they name their names to their children. So his name was Muhammad. His father was Muhammad. His grandfather was Nu'man. His father, Muhammad, the first, he was a, the teacher. He was known as Muallim. Sheikh al Mufid was known as Ibn. Mu'allim. Sheikh Mufid, he taught many scholars, including Sheikh Tusi. Sheikh Tusi is a big figure, Sheikh Al-Ta'ifa. Now, why are we mentioning Sheikh Al-Mufid? What was his name again? Muhammad bin Muhammad. Thank you very much. One day, Sheikh Mufid, he attended a lecture 
of a scholar by the name Isa Ar-Rumani. Please remember the name. The sheikh name? Isa Ar-Rumani. This sheikh Isa Ar-Rumani was teaching. When he was teaching, he mentioned something which made Sheikh Mufid to want to question the Sheikh. The Sheikh was Ahl Sunnah, from Ahl Sunnah. Sheikh Mufid, Shia. What was the issue? The Sheikh was discussing about two things, two events. The event of Al Ghadir and the event of the cave. Al Ghadir, we know, yeah? Man kuntu maulahu fahada. Aliyun Mawla, the Holy Prophet declared Ali as Mawla. Now, he mentioned the Sheikh Isa, what is his second name? Romani. Sheikh Isa Romani said, the event of Ghadir is on the basis of Riwaya. And Riwaya, it could be authentic, it could be not. So, event of Ghadir is not very important. But he mentioned the event of the cave when the Holy Prophet migrated from Makkah to Medina. He was with Abu Bakr, they entered into the cave. So Sheikh Isa, because he is a Sunni, he said the event of the cave is on the basis of Diraya. Take two words here. Yeah? Riwaya and Diraya. Riwaya it could be authentic, it could be not. Diraya, no, very strong. We do not challenge the event of the cave. So Sheikh Mufid, before he was given the name Mufid, he decided, no, I need to talk to this Sheikh. Because of his akhlaq, he didn't talk to him in front of everyone because he wanted to challenge him. He waited, he followed him at his house. He said, Sheikh, I have masala. Today, you taught us and you said the event of the cave is on the basis of Diraya and the event of Ghadir is on the basis of Riwaya. I want to ask you a question. Talha and Zubair and Aisha. Did they fight Amir al in the battle of Jamal or not? The Sheikh said yes. Why? Do you have any proof? He said, yeah, this is Diraya. He said, okay, if it is Diraya, it means it's very authentic. Can you tell me? <clears throat> he said, okay, they fought, so they were wrong. But Sheikh said, no, but they did Tawbah. They did repent. So Sheikh Mufid said, we know they fought against Amir al on the basis of Diraya. You must Allah that they did Tawbah is on the basis of what? Riwaya. The Sheikh looked at Sheikh Mufid, he's a Roman. He said, You are Mufid. You are Mufid. Meaning what? You give benefits. You make people to understand. And that's why he was known as Sheikh Al Mufid. But he said, Sheikh is a Roman. Some scholars say, No, no, no. <coughs> Sheikh Mufid's name was given by Imam of our time, Imam Sahib al Asri wa Zaman, Ajalallahu Ta'ala Faraja. Allah Muhammad. It was Imam Mahdi al Islam who called him Mufid. So now, why we mention Sheikh Mufid here? It's because of this. Sheikh Mufid lived in Baghdad. For those people who know the life of Baghdad is mix of Sunni Shia, and sometimes they have the debates. One day someone came to ask him and he said, Sheikh, I want to ask you about the ayah, the, the hadith, which the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam say, Man mata wa huwa la ya'arifu imama zamanihi mata mitatan jahiliya. This hadith, man mata, anyone who dies, wa huwa la ya'arifu imama zamani. And he doesn't know, he doesn't recognize the Imam of his time. If this person dies, he dies an ignorant death. It means that he dies as kafir. This person asked Sheikh Mufid, he said, this narration is very serious. 
If someone dies a Muslim now, he doesn't recognize the Imam of his time, he will die as a kafir. Is this narration that on the basis of the raya, is it authentic? Can you tell me? Sheikh Mufid, this is what he said. Sheikh said, huwa thabitun, wa sahihun, wa mashhurun, wa mutawatir. This hadith, yes, it is sahih, authentic. It is famous. The chain of narration is not broken. It goes up, up to Rasulullah. There is no doubt about this hadith. He says the hadith, hadith is authentic. Not only that. Now listen to the books which has, have mentioned this hadith mutawatir. Sunni, uh, first of all Shia books. Al-Kafi. Al-Mahasin of Al-Barqi. Uyun Akhbari Riva. Ikmal al-Din, Iqab al-A'mal, Ghaybat al-Nu'mani, Riyal al-Kishi, Al-Ikhtisas. All these books have mentioned this narration. Sunni books, Musnad Abi Dawood al-Tayalisi. Sunni books, Hilyat al-Awliya. Sunni books, Sharhi Nahj al-Balagha of Abil Hadid al-Mu'tazili. Sunni books, Yanabi'ul Mawadda. Sunni books, Al Mu'jamul Kabir, Li At Tabarani. Sunni books, Majmah al Zawa'id. All these books have mentioned this narration that it is authentic. There's no doubt at all about it. That if someone passes away, doesn't recognize the Imam of his time, he dies as a kafir. So now, when this was mentioned, he asked a question and he said, if this, I have few questions I, I want to ask you, Sheikh, in order for me to be okay with this narration. Number one, if the narration is authentic, now, you Shias, you believe in the ghaiba of Imam. Yeah? You believe in the ghaiba. If you believe in the ghaiba, listen to these polemic issues. He eh? says, if the hadith is sahih, you believe in Ghaiba. And in Ghaiba, La yattasilu bihi ahadun wa la ya'lamu makanahu wa mustaqarrahu. How then you believe in this hadith while nobody knows where Imam is? Nobody knows where he lives? Nobody knows where and where and so on? Nobody knows anything about this Imam. How can you believe in the Imam who is in occultation? Sheikh Abu Jafar here, he gave us a challenge and he said occultation. Yeah, in English. I was looking at the word, Sheikh. Occultation is something which is covered. Something which is hidden. They use, for example, for the moon, when there is eclipse, that part which we don't see, it is eclipse, that it is in occultation. So I think it's a loose word to say that we cannot see him. And that's the meaning of ghaiba. It doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Imam is existing, however, we cannot see him like this problem which was raised here. So now the issue is, how do you believe in the Imam? You cannot see him, he, you, you don't know where he lives. Sheikh al Mufid answered and he said, Luzumu wujudil Imam wa luzumu ma'rifatihi al musallamu bihi. He says, for us to, to believe that Imam, there is Imam who is known as Imam Mahdi, and to know, to know your Imam, to know your Imam, according to this hadith, the hadith has mentioned clearly, you need to know your Imam, you need to recognize your Imam. So now that is first thing. Once you know your Imam is existing, how there is Imam, and the narration says, if you die and you don't recognize him, you die a death which is, a, is like a kafir. He says, this is enough for us. For us to believe that, yes, we believe in the ghaiba of Imam, this doesn't make the belief that anyone who, who, who lives and he doesn't recognize the Imam of his time, 
If he dies, he dies there, and if he ignores them, there is no any contradiction between the two. The problem is you don't believe in, in the Ghaiba and you believe that Imam doesn't exist, Imam is not born, and you believe that there is this hadith. You get the point, yeah? So the hadith says, Imam, if you die, you don't recognize your Imam. There are people who don't recognize their Imam. People who don't believe in Ghaiba. They are in the biggest mushkila problem than we who believe that, yes, Imam is in Ghaiba, we cannot see him. Inshallah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, ask the question. Sorry. Yeah. For those who don't know the Sunni and say they believe in Imam Abu Hamid or mm. Shafi, Hanbali, and they are following them, what will be their test? And that is what they know. Yeah, there is a problem because those are not the Imams the Holy Prophet has mentioned them. People have given them im titles Imam. But those are not the Imam the Holy Prophet wanted to tell the Ummah. If you die and you don't recognize your Imam. But yeah? If you don't have the knowledge, so you're going to be accountable. There are two types of people. One who doesn't have knowledge and he can get the knowledge. And another one who doesn't have the knowledge and he cannot get it. Anyone who doesn't have knowledge of the Imam, but he can get it, he can research, he can go to the people, he can read the books, and he doesn't, he's in trouble. The other person, no, he's compelled. He lives in a, in a state where for him to get the information about the Imam is difficult. If he dies, Allah knows where he will put him. Now. The, uh, because he said the four, man, uh, the four imams as the Sunni followers, they, they don't follow as imams as a madhab, isn't it? Yeah, so that's why we say the Holy Prophet didn't mean those. Yeah, I'm, trying, I'm trying to understand. Yeah. Madhab and imam. Imam of the madhab. Yeah. The madhab and the imam is completely. Sure, and even the Holy Prophet didn't mention them as the leaders of the madhab. Yeah, the Holy Prophet didn't mention that. He mentioned one Imam who will be the Imam of the whole Ummah. And this is what the point is. Another objection from this person who has said Sheikh Mufin. He said, You Sheikh, ma hiyal maslaha fi mujarrad ma'arifatil imami ma'adamil ittisalimi. Second objection, yeah? What's the benefit of knowing Imam, but you cannot get opportunity to be in touch with him? What's the second problem? Yes, I know the Imam, but you can't get rich to the Imam. There is no any connection between you and Imam. What's the benefit of this Imam? Now, Sheikh Mufid here, he said, the Ma'arifa, just to know the Imam, Yanfa'una, this makes us to get the benefit. Bi annaktasiba biha thawab wal ajr. We get the thawab, we get the reward. Not only that, when we are waiting for him to come, this is ibadah. And when you do ibadah, it's benefit. You get thawab. So just to wait for Imam, you know he is there, he is in occultation, he is in ghaiba, he will come. We are waiting for him, it is thawab. Because why? When he comes, of course, he will be there with you. Then, he said, I have another problem. Problem number three. What is that? He said, the person who is in trouble. Imam is in occultation, is in ghaiba, we can't see him. I have Masai in Islamic issues, I don't know where to go because I can't get in touch with this Imam. What should I do? Sheikh Mufid say, before even you answer this question, you are in trouble too. What is the trouble? Rasulullah is not with you now. There is no any, anybody who can lead you to the correct answers of the issues. So you are too in trouble. Where do you go? He said, ah, we go to the scholars. We ask them for opinions. 
He said, exactly this is what we do. If we cannot see the Imam of our time, we cannot reach him, then we go to the scholars who are guiding us through the Islamic issues. Another objection, which is the final objection number four. If a carnal Imam be him cani hal the etimad fil amali be deen ala ma dukira mina no sus wal ishtihad wa kamil wa hood. Tumma kusul fahir idan mustavni al imam. He says the issue here is if now, if we can be able to solve our issues without depending on Imam who is in occultation, if we can do that, then we don't need Imam. Why do we need him if we can solve our issues? I know tafsir, I know a hadith, I know. Why do I need to wait for him? Here, Sheikh Mufid answered, he said, the need for our Imam is continuous, mustamira, even if he is in raiva occultation. He says, when, if you, when, when you become sick, and you need the medicine. Even if you don't have that medicine in front of you, you will be in need of that medicine. You can't say, well, because the medicine is not here, I am sick, I don't need the medicine. No, the need is continuous. You will, you will need that. And that's why we need Imam of our time, like the person who is ill, is in need of the medication. Now, when we look at Sheikh Mufid, the way he was dealing with people at his time, he didn't, he didn't say that, you know what? I can deal with only Quran, but I want to deal with you the way you think according to the thinking, then we can discuss this particular issue. In the beginning, he mentioned few verses of the Holy Quran, and I remember I need to mention this. In Surah Al-Isra, Surah number 17, ayah 71. Surah 17, ayah 71. وَيَوْمَ نَدْعُوا كُلَّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِمْ فَمَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَقْرَعُونَ كِتَابَهُمْ وَلَا يُظْلَمُونَ فَتِينَ On the day of Qiyamah, people will be given their books. These books will be given to them after يَوْمَ نَدْعُوا كُلَّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِمْ We will call every group of people with their Imam. Yama, you know Arabic, yeah? You know Swahili, Swahili Arabic? يَوْمَ نَدْعُوا Aya 17, Surah, Aya 71, Surah 17. يَوْمَ نَدْعُوا كُلَّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِمْ Did Allah say, بِنَبِيِّهِمْ be Rasulihim? No. He says, be Imamihim. So nobody should come to you and say, no, Imamiya means Nabi. No. Remember the day when we will call every group of people with their Imam. He says, this is ayah number one. Ayah number two is in Surah An Nisa, Surah number four, ayah 41. Surah An Nisa 41. فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئِنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئِنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَا أُولَاءِ شَهِيدًا فَكَيْفَ How? إِذَا جِئِنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ When we will bring with, the, with every umma, every group of people with a witness وَجِئِنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَا أُولَاءِ شَهِيدًا And we will bring you, Rasulullah, as a witness to this group of people. So now, here, when we look at these verses, we understand that there is a need for us to recognize and know our Imam, Imam of our time, and that is Sahib al Asri wa Zaman, Al Hujja ibn al Hassan al Mahdi, Ajalallahu ta'ala, Faraja al Shari. As Sheikh Abu Jafar mentioned, Ustad Arif mentioned, the points are very important. Sometimes we have people who may challenge you on the issues which they themselves don't know the answers. 
but they want just to add you there for the sake of argument. Someone may tell you, ah, how can we believe in the Imam who has not been born? We say, yes, he's born. For you to interfere with Allah's affairs, that is the problem. For you, you are small, short intellect to say, how can someone live for quite a long time and it is not dead? That is your problem. It's not the problem of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another issue, Haiba. Sheikh has mentioned here. Some people, when you talk to them about Ghaiba, they take it as a very big issue. Sheikh Mufid has mentioned also. He says Ghaiba, take it in a very simple way. Ghaiba is when someone who, who lives is existing, but you can't see him. You can't meet with him. He's in Ghaiba. Now he starts with Rasulullah. Do you know that Rasulullah was in Ghaiba? Sheikh Mufid mentions. Number one. The Holy Prophet was in Ghaiba when he was doing Hijrah from Makkah to Medina. Where did he stay? In the cave. Did people see him? No. Muslims were there in need of Rasulullah? Yes. But he was in the cave for a few days. He was in Ghaiba. That is Ghaiba. And then people want to talk about the Maslaha of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They say, well, this Imam Mahdi is in Ghaiba. What is the Maslaha? We say, we don't know the Maslaha, we don't know the Hikmah. But we can ask you the question, Allah, why did you allow Rasulullah to be protected by the pigeon and the cobweb? Not house of Allah, not al Kaaba. Why Rasulullah? The ayah, what does it say? One, uh, says fihi ayatun bayinat wa man dakhalahu kana fihi maqam ibrahim eh? in it in makka there is maqam ibrahim and this house of allah wa man dakhalahu kana amina anyone who enters makka is secure is at peace why Rasulullah was not at peace and he had to go to the cave to be protected there? When sometimes we say, ah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, Allah, why did you allow him to go to the cave?